My name is Robert Krokmalik. Um, my legal name is Abraham Krokmalik. I was named after my grandfather, Abraham Krokmalik. I was born in 1948, on the 15th of June 1948. My mother was Rose or Ruja or Roja uh, Krokmalik. She was originally Rosa Rochman. My father was um, Benjamin Krokmalnik. Yes. He changed his name after the war to Krochmalik. It's a long story, it's not particularly relevant. So I'm Krochmalik, but his name was Krochmalnik. He was one of six children. He was the only one to survive the, uh, the Holocaust. His parents didn't survive. His aunts and uncles didn't survive. He was the only one from that whole family. And as a result of that, when I grew up, I never had any aunts or uncles or grandparents, cousins. Um, my father had a distant relative, a second cousin, who lived in Israel. Um, and that was his only relative in the world. You know, yet he came from a family of six and I think he was the youngest in that family uh, of six and no one else survived. It's really very sad that we didn't, we didn't ask questions. He wasn't communicative. I didn't hear from my father exactly how it transpired. I heard different sorts of things, but I heard from, um, from the grandchildren of Antonio and um, Bratislava Nogulka that um, I think it was in 1942, uh, my father was coming home from work and Bratislava called my father over and warned him not to go back to the ghetto. They lived in a compound across the road from the ghetto. So it's now a forest, and that was the Otfoss ghetto. Again, I was told by them, I never, I never came here with my father, so I never, I never got to, to hear it from him. But I was told that Bratislava saw him coming home from work and said, don't go back to the ghetto, you'll be arrested, come into our house. I don't know what relationship there was, I don't know how he knew them, I don't know any of these, these stories. All I know is what I heard from, um, from Antonio's grandchildren, that that was how my father went to live with them. And from that time, which I think was, I'm not sure when it was in 1942, whenever the, the ghetto was liquidated, he lived in their house. And I heard from my father that he used to live in the cellar. But I heard from uh, Antonio, from Nagulka's grandchildren, that in fact he lived in the house with them and only when the Germans were nearby would he go down into the cellar. Um, unfortunately, the building that he was hidden in is no longer there. The family, um, Wojtek and his, his wife, uh, Basha, his sister, um, they all live if you, in, in a compound where you drive in from the street and there were four or five houses and they still live in the same place. But the building where my father was hidden burnt down several years ago, so we can't see the building anymore. He was a person who didn't really share his feelings at all. He was, um, I don't want to say closed, but I think probably he was closed, you know, like, um, he didn't, not only about the wartime, just generally, you know, he was, he was not a, uh, 
communicative person, so I know very little about that. But my father used to tell me that um, he was in the cellar and he was not the only one. He was there for several years and at different times other people came and they hid other people as well as my father and there were sometimes three or four people in hiding um, in the cellar and the way my father described it was that at night time he would get out and I'm not sure what he would do but he would you know he would feel free to go out and, and to walk around but he was there for the whole of the um, for the for the rest of the war until the liberation after the war he met my mother. My mother was from Lublin. She was passing through Otvotsk. I don't know how or why. They got married in Lodge in 1945, in Woodge, sorry, in 19, um, 1945. And they then moved to uh, a small town called Bucknung in Germany in a displaced persons camp where I was born in 1948 and they lived there for three years and then they came to uh, to Australia. There's a strong feeling certainly in the Australian Jewish community that the Polish people were not good to the Jews, there was anti-Semitism and I think it's important that people know that there were people like Antonio and Bratislava who did extremely courageous and brave things. Things that I can't honestly say I would do in their circumstances. I think, I would like to think I would do the right thing, but I don't know that I can say that I would. You know, and I think, you know, I think this is important. And this is the reason why, you know, my children wanted to come and meet these people. I came back with with stories about how warm they were, how nice they were, what camaraderie there was between us. And my children wanted to come. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to, um, to share um, this camaraderie with them. So like, we're all getting wonderful pleasure out of it.